Hey guys, what's up? It's Ocean the Skater here. In this episode, we're taking a look at setting up a Bungie Cord server. That's right, we're getting into the big stuff. So before we get started, I just want to kind of illustrate what exactly Bungie Cord is in case you're still confused. So, generally you'd have your servers like maybe factions, I guess. Well, we'll say factions. We're going to be using a few different examples today. So we got factions, we've got maybe uh, prison, and maybe uh, townie, we'll say kind of a weird combination, but who knows? Oops, messed up that Y, there we go, good enough. All right, so you got those servers, so generally you wanna have a hub as well, so that people join into the hub and then they can choose these. So you also have your bungee cord, and that is referred to as a proxy, generally. And basically you join into your bungee cord and it'll pop you down in your default server, which is usually set as the hub. So then from there you can do slash server factions maybe or slash server prison or maybe even slash server townie, <laughs> all right? So that's usually how it's set up. But basically the main point is that you join through the bungee cord and then you're able to go through all, uh, all these servers. However, if you, did, you were to join directly into factions, you would be secluded to factions. So let's get right to it. In today's tutorial, I'll be using three servers, not like four or five. I just want to keep it simple. So we have our bungee cord, we have our factions, and hub. And none of these servers are actually set up yet. I've only put in the essential files that I'll need to get started. So I've got my run, I've got the server jar, and I've got my eula.txt, so I don't have to worry about that. So first, we're going to get our hub generated. Oh, that is not <laughs> the right thing. All right, if you don't know how to run a server, then I suggest going and checking out episode three. If you don't know how to get a server jar that is 1.8 or higher, then check out episode 2. I'll have links to both of them in the description below. So what we're doing is we're generating our hub real quick. So that one's done. So I'm actually just going to go ahead and stop that now. And we're going to go and generate our factions. We'll run that as well. And finally, we're going to go ahead and... Uh, there's all these files now. We can go ahead into our bungee cord and we're going to run that as soon as this is done. We'll get ready to stop this and it is done. We'll stop it. All right, and you can go to this link in the description to get bungee cord. All you have to do, go to that site and you're going to see your bungee cord.jar right here. You go ahead and click on that. It's going to download it and we're going to run our bungee cord server and this would go a bit faster if I um, wasn't recording my screen. So now we've got that running in the bungee cord I'll always or not always, but it starts up a lot faster than a server because it's just a proxy. It's not as heavy duty. So we'll stop this too. And I don't think you can, yeah, you can't really just type stop. I just close it out. That's fine. Since there's nothing really to save, I guess. If we take a quick look at my run.bat file, you'll see it's pretty much the same as running a server, except for it starts with half a gig of RAM and the maximum is one gigabyte of RAM. Make sure that this part right here matches what your bungee cord is called or whatever server you're running is called. And that's all there is to it. So now we've got all of them, all the files generated. Now we need to configure them all. So first what we're gonna do is configure these two. All right. So we're gonna go into our server.properties first. And there are two things we've gotta do in the server properties. We're gonna switch this from online mode to offline mode by switching that to false. And we're gonna change our port. And if you're running it on your computer, then you just, you need to do this part. However, if you are, if they're hosted, then they're already going to have different ports and IPs. So no problem there. So we're going to go ahead and save that. So just make sure it's in offline mode and has a different port. We can close that and we're going to go to the factions. And I'm, I'm actually just going to put a 2-2 here so I know that it ends in 2-2. Because the uh, default port is 25565. So I'm putting 2-2 here and the bungee cord is going to have the 65 ending. All right, I'm going to make this one, you know what? Yeah, yeah, we'll make that one 3-3. Three, three. So we'll go in here, same deal pretty much. Switching this to offline mode and switching this to 3-3 three, three because the IP is the same for all these servers because it's running on my computer. So that's fine right there. And what we've got to do next is go into the spigot.yml of these two servers and change this one line right here from bungee cord for bungee cord from false to true. If you're not using spigot, then we're going to have to do something else to address this uh, bungee cord setting to true. And I'll show you what that is a bit later on after we have the bungee cord running. As this isn't crucial to having it running, but more so as a safety precaution. 
So we'll save that, close it, and go back to the hub. And go to spigot.yml and also change it in that one. True. All right, so I think that's it for these. So now we can go in and start editing our bungee cord. All right, so what we're going to do is go into the config.yml and we're going to take a look at this. So there's a few different things that we can change. We're going to first just switch this MD5 to my name. So that just means that OCE or 0CE is in the group admin. And right down here, we have admin permissions. So if you've used a permissions plugin such as permissions X, group manager, B permissions, Z permissions, all that stuff, then you'll have a decent idea of what's going on here. Basically, you can put plugins on your Bungie Cord server too, which are really cool. Like you can uh, set up friends plugin, you can set up other stuff, uh, cross server messaging and stuff like that. And you just add your permissions in right here. You can also add in different groups too. So like uh, I could put in one called op and then have permissions, I don't know. But that doesn't really matter right now. That's not what I'm here to show you. So listeners, you can have your query port set up. The MOTD is right here. And we're going to set this to uh, Bungie, all right? And this part isn't going to matter because I'll tell you why in a second. So we have the tab list. And this is just going to be when you press down tab, it's going to, with this option, it's going to show all the players connected to the Bungie cord server. So if you're on, say, I'm just using this as an example. If you're on, say, your prison server, you hold tab down, then it's going to show all the people that are on your prison server, your hub, your factions, your townie, provided that those are the servers you have. If we just change this to global, then it's just going to show all the players connected, but not update their pings. If we change this to server, right here, then it's just going to show the people connected to. The, it's just going to show the people connected to the server you're on. So I'm going to switch this back to global underscore ping, and we're just going to keep query off. I don't really want to do that. Forest host. This is something that I'm going to get to in a different video because it deserves a whole video to set up. Default server. We're going to change this to hub. All right. And uh, we're going to set these servers up in a sec. Bind local address, we're just going to leave this to true. This doesn't really matter unless your server has multiple different IP addresses. But for my server, it only has one IP address, so it doesn't really make a difference at all. If your servers have different IP addresses, then you should set it to true for what we're doing. The fallback server is just for if the hub were down, what's it going to connect to? So since we only have two actual servers, we're going to set this to factions. I think that's what we, yeah, factions. All right. So now the host, this is going to be what your uh, Bungie Cord server's IP is. All right, so since this is just hosted on my computer, this is what it's going to be. And I'm just going to change the port to 25565, so it's the default port. And yeah, so if your server was hosted by a hosting company, then in, and you're using Multicraft, it would just be like your IP right here or whatever. That's just my townie server, so. Max players, we're going to change this to that just because. Actually, maybe that. Tab size you can leave alone if you're on 1.8 or higher. If you're lower than that, then it's just going to adjust how many slots are there on your tab list. Force default server, we're going to set this to true. This just basically makes it so that when a player joins the bungee, then they're automatically going to go to your default server, the hub. If this was set to false and you were playing on your faction server and then left the network, then join the network again, then they'd plop you back in the faction server. However, if you have it to true, and you're playing on factions and then left and joined again, you go back to the hub. So most people like to have this set to true so that you're always joining into the hub. The timeout is how long the Bungie Corp proxy can go unresponsive before shutting off all connections. So 30,000 should be fine. The connection throttle is how much time should be between connection attempts. If it's at 4,000, that just means 4,000 milliseconds, which is four seconds. So that means if I were to join a server, then someone else has got to wait four seconds before they join. And that's just really annoying. So I like to put it to negative one, which just disables it. Now servers, this is where we set up our actual servers. So be very careful when doing this part. Just make sure you don't copy this down here because some people think that this is part of the lobby. However, it's not. So what we're going to do is go ahead and grab this lobby part. It's going to include the MOTD, the address and restricted. We're going to copy that. We're going to go down and paste it. So now we have two copies of that. We're going to make the top one hub, and we're going to make the other one factions. So now we're going to name this right here um, server support. I don't know. And we're going to name this one. This one doesn't matter at all, but I'm just naming it so that you guys can kind of know, I guess. So since we have force default server enabled, then it's going to grab the default server, which is hubs, 
MOTD. So it's not going to grab this MOTD up here. It's going to grab this one down here from the hub since it is the default server. So the address, this is where you type in your server's IP address and port. So if it were hosted by a company, you just grab that from the main page of your multicraft panel for that server. So since I'm hosting this on my computer, we're just going to leave that localhost colon 255 and 22. And that's because remember in the hub, server.properties, then we set the port to 25522 right there. So you can see right here, 25522. The factions one is going to be 25533. And restricted, you can set a server to restricted, and that just means that people with certain permissions can join. So I'm in admin up here. So if we gave the admin the permission, bungee cord dot restricted, dot and then the server so like hub or factions and that means i can still join it even if it's set to restricted so this is good for if you just need some people on while you're working on the server or something like that so now you can just repeat this step for as many servers as you have pretty straightforward i think now the ip forward this is something that we probably want to enable ip forward allows you to forward their ip address through to the servers so if you have this off then it's just going to show the ip address of the actual bungee cord network if you use slash scene from essentials. Also, if you ban their IP, then it's going to ban everyone on the server because everyone has the same IP. But if you enable this, then it's going to forward their actual IP address. Online mode is pretty self-explanatory, so I'm not going to have to go over that. So we're going to go ahead. So we're going to go ahead and save that and close it out. And that's our server.properties on that's not it. Uh, sorry, that's our config on bungee cord and we can leave the rest of this stuff alone. Now we're going to go ahead and run this now and it's all running listening on and that's the right thing so I'm going to add all these servers to my multiplayer server list. So we're going to add the bungee and this is just going to be zero since it's the local host and on default port. I'm going to add the hub just to have it just to have it so that you guys can see that it's running. So we'll do zero colon 25522 since it's just running on my computer and the port is uh, 25522 so it's not running right now and we're going to add the factions server which is 0 colon oh, that's not colon 25533 hit done and we've got that one too so now we're going to run them all so we'll open up the hub run that one and the factions and run that one alright so this one is the factions and this one is the hub so we've got the uh, bungee hub factions so now if I refresh this, you can see that they're all done running, they're up, so you can see them down here. So if I try to join directly to the hub, you'll see we can't join, all right, which is exactly what we want. All right, so if I try the same thing with factions, can't join directly to it. And this is because our servers are, are in offline mode. However, we've switched bungee cord to true in the spigot.yml. So if we didn't set bungee cord to true, then you'd be able to join directly to the actual server, and we don't want that because that means that someone with a cracked client can put in any username they want and join that server. That means they could put in the owner's username, join it, and the server would think that they're the owner, which is not good. So if you're not using Spigot, then we're going to need to get a plugin called IP Whitelist. And all you have to do is download it. I'm just going to speed through this part because it's not, uh, it's not too complicated. I'm just going to toss this on the hub, though. I'm not going to worry about putting it on the factions one since uh, factions is fine. I just want to show you guys the difference. So we're going to go ahead and stop the hub server and run it again. All right, so it's generated the config file. We'll go into that and we're going to add in, since this is running on my computer, then I'm going to keep this top line right here. And we're going to add in another one and it's just going to say localhost. So since it's running on my computer, I'm not even sure if I have to add in localhost, but I'm just doing it. If your servers are run by a hosting company, then just toss in the IP address of your bungee cord server. Just the, um, just the IP address, not the port. Oh yeah, also make sure to set this to false since it's all set up. So, we can close that and we're gonna stop our uh, thingy and we'll start it up again. All right, so we stopped our hub server, we started it back up and now we can join through our proxy and we're into the hub. All right, cool. So we can go into GM1. No, we can't because I don't have any plugins on it. But yeah, so now we're into our hub. So if we do slash server, that is not what I want to do, slash server, then you can see that we have two different servers on here. We have the hub and the factions. And 
with this version of uh, Bungie Cord. I think it's really cool. I just found out, about, found out about this yesterday. You can mouse over the server, which is sweet. So I can mouse over factions, click on that. You can see we're taken to the factions server, and we're in a jungle, which is pretty cool. Well, a bit of a jungle, I guess. Yeah, it's yeah, it's. I think it's 100% jungle actually. Yeah, that's a full-on jungle. So now we can do slash server hub again. Go back to the hub, and you can see right down here that we've left this game and we're joining this game or server, I guess. And yeah, that's all there really is to it. I mean, we've got our bungee working now. All right, one more thing I'm going to show you before I go is a really cool plugin that I think will really benefit your server, mainly because instead of having to do slash server and then clicking on hub right there or doing slash server hub. All you have to do is slash hub. And I think that that's really crucial. Plus, I can show you how to add plugins in and set up permissions real quick. And sorry about tapping the microphone just then. So if I do slash hub, it's not going to work because it doesn't exist yet. If I go ahead and download this plugin called slash server right there, really cool. Then we can download that and keep it. And this is not the right folder. Bungie cord plugins and toss it on there. We can go ahead and stop our bungee cord and run it again. And it's just going to load up and you can say loaded plugin slash server version 3. So now if we go into the plugins, there is a config file for that too. So when we open up the config, then there's just a few different things. First, it lists all your servers. So we just have hub and factions and a number after them. This number just defines how long it'll take to teleport to that world. So if I put, let's say, three seconds, whoops, three seconds on factions, then it's going to take three seconds to get to the faction server. Oh, right here actually it's uh, milliseconds, so we do 3000. Then we just have some different strings. So already on the server, then it says you're already on the server, and all that stuff, and I'm fine with that stuff. Except for this, I want to change this. Teleporting you to the server, blah, blah, blah. And we'll save that and close it. And now, before we restart a server, we're going to go into the config and add in permissions for it. So the permissions are right here, slash server dot, and then the server name. So we're going to add this to the default group so that everyone has access to it. And we're going to do slash server dot hub. And we're going to copy and paste this one, slash server dot factions. All right. So we're going to go ahead and save that. And by default, everyone's in the default group. So no problem at all. So we can stop this and run it. And we can go back into our bungee. It's going to pop us into the hub server right here. And if we do slash hub, you're already on the server. Perfect. We'll do slash factions, and it says teleporting you to server factions. And you can see it takes three seconds to do that. So now we're on here, and if we pop back over to the hub server, it's instant because we haven't set a time limit on that. So that's how you add plugins and set up permissions, and I guess kind of groups too, since you just kind of put it at the top there. That's all there really is to it. If you have any questions, leave a comment down below and I'll try my best to answer it. If you have any suggestions for videos I should make on helping you guys, whether it be on servers, on bungee cord networks, or anything else, then just let me know and I'll try my best to make that happen. I have a few more bungee related videos planned, which can really help like economy related and ban related. So stay tuned for that. We'll see you in the next video. Peace.